Hello everybody, welcome to Forces Unit 1, Lesson 4. This is about resultant forces. For this lesson, you are going to need a pen or a pencil, something to write with, a piece of paper or an exercise book, something to write on. A ruler is probably going to be quite helpful here. A calculator may help. Also, for this lesson, if you're able to print out the sheet that goes with the lesson, please do so. If not, you can sketch your answers on a piece of paper, so that will not matter. If you can print it out, that may be helpful for you. If you haven't got those things, go and do them now. Pause the video. Okay, let's get started. Start off, as always, with what you should already know from the last few lessons. Write down your answers. Pause the video. Let's see how you got on them. So, first question, forces measured with what unit is measured in Newtons or capital N? Little n is not correct here, it means something different. Contact force, the key bit here, something has to touch and the force to act. Two examples of contact forces, any from things like friction, air resistance and tension. Um, Non-contact force, something doesn't have to touch um, for the force to act, so no touching is required. Um, examples can include magnetic force, gravitational force, and electrostatic force. As I said in previous lessons, just saying a push or a pull is not good enough for this. Um, you could have a pull of gravity, gravitational pull, um, or you could have someone pulling with a rope. So the word pull doesn't distinguish between contact and non-contact force, so it would be wrong. Vector quantity, it's a quantity where you have magnitude, which is size and direction. And the scalar quantity just has magnitude or size. You got all of those right, well done. Another question for you to have a go at now. Have a go at this one, write down your answer, pause the video, and we'll see how you did when you press play again. Well, here's what you should have done. You should have added together the 500, the 600, and the 600, and that gives you a total resultant force of these three of 1,700 newtons. You should have added these three here together, the five, the four, and the nine, gives you a resultant force of 1,800 newtons. And the resultant force of the whole lot, really, these two, this one take away that one, 1,800 take away 1,700, is, 100 newtons. So the answer here is a resultant force of 100 newtons to the right. The, ro the rope moves right, the team on the right wins. So to summarise then, we can replace all of the forces above, all of these six forces, um, with one single force called the resultant force. And in this case, there was 100 newtons to the right. So the 100 newtons to the right is one force that replaces all of those forces the effect of all of those forces added together. Let's have a look at the sort of thing you might get in the exam question. This is a little extract from a GCSE exam question a few years back. Give you a couple of moments, pause the video, have a think what you think the correct answer is. Well, quite easy. Six go into the right, take away two go into the left. Six take away two is four, so it's four newtons to the right. Well done if you got that correct. Something a little bit more difficult now, what if the forces are not forwards and backwards? Well, you can see here, two forces going in two randomish sort of directions, definitely not forwards and backwards. The resultant force, I'm guessing, you think of that as an object and someone pulling that way and someone pulling that way. It's gonna go somewhere sort of down the middle, but exactly where? what size, we're going to have to work that out. We're going to have to do this one by having, uh, by, by doing some bits and pieces in our diagram. So we're going to use the ruler um, to measure the length of these things. The length of them is going to represent the size of the forces. So if I use the ruler down here to measure this, that is a length of seven. So let's put that in. Let's use the ruler over here now. The ruler here is reading four. So this force here is four newtons. So the question is really, what's the resultant force if I've got four newtons pulling that way and seven newtons pulling that way? Well, what we have to do is something a little bit clever. We have to take this four newtons here and draw it at the end of the seven newtons arrow. So we're going to, we've got the seven newtons followed by the four newtons. And the answer 
is simply the diagonal line. So let's put the diagonal in. And that is the resultant force. That is the direction. Now, because the length of these arrows here is the length of the forces, if you measure the length of the diagonal with a ruler, put that in, you can see the length there is 9.3 newtons. So let's write that in. Resultant force is 9.3 newtons. The direction of the arrow here is the direction of the resultant force, which is pretty much what we suggested at the beginning. And that is how we work out resultant force when you've got two arrows not going forwards and backwards or going in random directions. Now, you might be asking, well, you did the seven, which is this one here, followed by the four. Why did you do it that way around? Why didn't you do the four followed by the seven? Well, simple answer is you could have done, you could have done it in any order. Let's do it the other way, see what we get. So there's our seven and our four. We do the four first, and then we do the seven across the top. So that is literally that arrow just moved up to there. There's our diagonal. Well, weirdly enough, that diagonal looks exactly the same as the one we had last time. Let's measure it. Oh, look, it's coming out again as 9.3. So you can see the resultant force is still 9.3, exactly the same. The direction is exactly the same as it was before. So you can do it either way. In actual fact, some people, they like to do it just almost like a sort of double check. They do the seven followed by the four, and they do the four followed by the seven. And then they do the diagonal in, and you get almost like double checking your answer. Doing it either way, or doing it with both of them is perfectly correct, and it will all give you the same answer. Time to record the key information now. So I want you to, on your piece of paper or in your book, write out the method. I've written out the four steps for you. I've included the diagrams. Feel free to include them if you think that will help you remember the sequence. Pause your video now. Okay, let's get going again. Then hopefully you've got that written out. Let's have a go at a little exam question now. A skydiver jumps from an airplane. There is a resultant vertical force of 350 newtons on the skydiver. The resultant vertical force is his weight, or gravitational force pulling him down, balanced by the air resistance pushing him up. And the overall resultant of those two forces is 350 newtons. Horizontal force from the wind going sideways then of 80 newtons. Draw a vector diagram, that's a diagram like what we've just done in our uh, previous little section. On figure two, figure two was um, on the exam question was just the graph paper, and we'll bring that up in a minute, to determine the magnitude, that's the size, and the direction of the resultant force on the skydiver. Let's have a go at working out our answer. Now, there is a resultant vertical force of 350 newtons on the skydiver, so let's draw the arrow in vertically. Um, now, obviously, I don't have 350 little boxes on my graph. Um, so what I need to do is have some kind of scale. And what I've said is every 10 little boxes is going to represent 50 newtons. So the dark lines are the 10 box lines. So 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350 newtons. Horizontal force from the wind of 80 newtons. I'm going to draw that along the bottom. So there's 50 newtons at that line there. Another six little boxes makes it up to 80. Draw a vector diagram to determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force of the skydiver. This is very, very, very much like what we did earlier on in this lesson, where we have to draw our lines in and then do a diagonal. So let's do a line in there. This line here is the horizontal force, just put it at the end of the vertical one. So we do that one and move it to the end there. And then we put in our diagonal, and that is our resultant force. So the direction of the resultant force is the direction of the red arrow. And we're going to measure the length of that arrow in a moment and work out the size or the magnitude of the force. You might not have done it that way. What I could have done is done the horizontal first and the vertical second. That's no problem. Um, the diagonal is exactly the same, so it's the same direction and the same size. So Let's do some measurements. Now, because we're doing it in scales, just measuring, just measuring it doesn't give us a full answer. But you can see here, every one, every one unit on the scale 
represents 50 newtons because it's representing the 10 boxes here. So that is 50 newtons. One is also 50 newtons. So let's move the ruler and measure the length of the diagonal. So we can see here, there's the length. That is 7.2 there, you can see 7.2. So the answer is 7.2 times 50 is 360. So the answer is the resultant force is the direction of the red arrow and the size, the magnitude of it is 360 newtons. So, a couple of practice questions to finish off then. If you've actually managed to print off the sheet that goes with the lesson, then you can have a go at the uh, pre-printed examples on that. If not, don't worry, just sketch these down, maybe with a ruler, but sketch them down onto a piece of paper as close as you can get to what's on the screen, and then have a go at them. So those are the questions. Pause the video now. So let's have a look at what you should have done. Well, to work out the resultant force here, you need to either move this arrow to the end of the other arrow, so it goes up there, or you need to move that arrow to the end of this arrow, so it goes up there. So either of those or both would have been absolutely fine, and you should have come out with a diagonal going across there. Now, the length of that diagonal is the size of the force, and the direction of the arrow is the direction of the force. You could have done a similar thing for this one down here. So there's your there's that one's put to the end there, or that one's put to the end here, and you've got your diagonal. Now, if you've got those diagrams done, and it looks something like that, then well done, you've got it right. Now, you may have taken this a little bit further, particularly if you're using the printout that comes with the lesson, and you may have measured the length of the sides. I did that, I had nine there and nine there, and my resultant force came out as 13. Now, if you didn't get those answers, don't worry, particularly, um, a lot of printers print it at slightly different scales. So you might have got this as 8 point something or 9 point something, and this is 12 point something or 30. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit out. That's not a problem at all. That is more your printer rather than you doing it wrongly. Likewise, down the bottom here, 4 and 9 and 12. If you had a go at doing the lengths and measurements and you've got answers similar or the same as mine, then well done. Well, that's it. For today folks if there's anything you weren't sure of and you want to rewind the video and go back and have a look at it feel free to do so otherwise that is it thank you